Due to the vast latitudinal and longitudinal extent of the continent, much of the land area is influenced by continental type of climate as they are kept away from the moderating influence of seas and oceans. So the continental type of climate that exists over much of the land area of the continent experiences high annual range of temperature, which includes a range of different climatic conditions with their corresponding vegetation and wildlife. So we will be taking a look at these climatic conditions, their vegetation and the wildlife that exists over these regions, which are highly influenced by the continental type of climate that prevails over much of the Asian continent. So if you take a look at the tree here on the screen, have you seen this somewhere? Somewhere similar that we come across almost every year, mostly at the year end? Well, that's a clue. We see such trees during Christmas. These trees represent the Xmas tree that we enthusiastically decorate during the Christmas Eve. So where do we find such trees? Why are we talking about Christmas trees now? Well, such trees are called coniferous trees and are part of the taiga forest or the taiga vegetation that prevails or exists over the northern part of the continent. So taiga forest or the taiga vegetation is also known as the boreal forest and is often regarded as the land of little sticks in Russia. Now, why are they known as the land of little sticks? This is mainly because the vegetation here is stunted and skinny. Other than that, if you see the location of the taiga forest, you see that it falls in the Siberian region right to the south of the tundra vegetation or the tundra type of climate regions. So the taiga vegetation is to the south of the tundra vegetation or the tundra type of climate region and they are also regarded as the boreal forest. Now the word boreal forest is also derived from a Russian language and it is mostly taken from the Siberian plain. So the taiga type of vegetation has stunted and skinny vegetation. Now what more do we know about the climate that exists here? Well. Taiga is characterized by long cold winters that mostly last up to six months. And the average temperature during winter season is almost below freezing point. So these are cold long winters. The region also here experiences short summer that mostly last up to 50 to 100 days. And the annual precipitation is from moderate to high, mostly in the form of rain and snow in summer and winter respectively. So what we learnt now is that taiga has long cold winters, short summers and moderate to high annual precipitation. Now the taiga forest that mostly lies between 23.3 degrees north to 66.3 degrees north consists of coniferous trees. Now coniferous trees have a distinct physical feature. So from all the images here, what do we understand? That the coniferous trees have needle shaped leaves. As I mentioned earlier, the region here experiences long winters. So to save themselves from long winters, they have these needle shaped leaves that keeps transpiration at minimum and helps them restore the amount of minerals and water present in it. So after the long winters are over during the short summer season, the needle shaped leaves shake off the extra snow that they have collected over the long winters. Now the coniferous trees usually consist of larches, pines, spruces, firs that grow in abundance in taiga and they are mostly found between 50 degree north to 66.5 degree north latitudes. Now the conifers trees, particularly the spruce and the pine, provide us with softwood trees. Now these softwood trees are a good source of softwood pulp. Now what do we mean by this softwood pulp? Well, the softwood trees are known to have long fibers and they are less dense or light in nature. They also are good observant products. 
therefore the softwood pulp drawn from these trees are used in the manufacture of a variety of paper products so we see that the softwood trees that are conifers trees in the taiga forest are commercially very valuable and they are used for a variety of purposes however these beautiful and commercially useful softwood trees are now in danger why so so the taiga forests particularly of the russian siberian plain are endangered both the flora and fauna are in threat because of the continuous felling of the taiga forest for the paper industry so we need to adapt newer and more sustainable methods of carrying on with the usage of these taiga forest the mammals in the taiga forest or the regions experiencing the taiga type of climate usually have thick hair or thick fur to adapt themselves to the climate here now the mammals that are usually found in this region includes fox and wolf now other than these large mammals we also have other mammals that exist in the region and this includes pole cat it also includes huge large bears then other than these bears we also have lynx and besides these lynx we also have the musk ox that are huge in size and finally the beautiful great horned owl we also find river otter in this region so there's a variety of fauna found in the taiga forest so that was all about the taiga vegetation and the taiga type of climate now let us jump into another major climate type that exists in the continent of asia we are talking about the temperate type of climate now the temperate type of climate or the temperate zone over the continent of asia has three subtypes of its own and these subtypes includes steppe mediterranean and tropical monsoon so steppe mediterranean and tropical monsoon type of climate are a part of the temperate climate that exist in asia so we'll be looking at each of them one by one so immediately after the taiga type of climate or the taiga climate region we have a region that experiences steppe type of climate now if you can see on the map the steppe type of climate or regions experiencing this type of climate usually covers area around the caspian sea southwestern part of siberia and eastern mongolia so these regions are where we have a steppe type of climate now what is so different about this climate so the regions that experience a steppe type of climate have low annual rainfall or low annual precipitation so the growth of tall trees is not possible here there are no mountains or barriers to check the moisture laden winds with less precipitation therefore the region is mostly covered by vast stretches of grasslands so the steppes practically are treeless regions because of less or low annual precipitation and they consist of vast stretches of grasslands over the central and western asia as we saw a while ago and these are often referred to as the temperate grasslands however these vast stretches of grasslands are now being cut down for the cultivation of which a large area of the steppe region has been cut down or cleared so before we proceed with the lesson could you help me answer this question steppes of central and western asia are also known as tundra tropical grasslands taiga or temperate grasslands yes the correct answer is temperate grasslands steppes falling in the temperate zone or being a part of the temperate type of climate has vast stretches of grasslands which are known as temperate grasslands the vast grasslands of the steppes or the region experiencing steppe type of climate usually includes a variety of animals some of them are these strong long horned deers wild horses donkeys and mules 
Now, let us jump into another subtype of the temperate type of climate. We are talking about the Mediterranean type of climate, which is mostly found along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. So, right along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, we have the Mediterranean type of climate. Now, the Mediterranean type of climate is one of the most loved climates in the continent of Asia. Why? Because the very word Mediterranean brings to our mind those beautiful long beaches with golden snow bathed with the beautiful sunshine. The white sparkling azure waters that are found here and the moderate pleasant climate that prevails over the region. So the Mediterranean type of climate calls for a moderate to pleasant weather that prevails over the region here and it makes the region one of the most favorite tourist destinations from people all across the globe. The Mediterranean type of climate is characterized by hot dry summers and mild to wet winters. Rainfall in the winter season is a characteristic feature of the Mediterranean type of climate. The Mediterranean region or the Mediterranean climate region are popularly known as the orchids of the world. This is mostly because of the fruit cultivation that is found in abundance in the region here. So the trees in the region adapt themselves to the dry summers with the help of barks and wax coated leaves. As you can see from the picture here, the leaves are wax coated leaves. This helps in reducing the transpiration or the rate of evaporation of water from the leaves. Now due to this, the trees here can easily adapt to the hot and dry summer and can survive easily during the summer season. So the Mediterranean type of climate besides providing a pleasant moderate weather also provides us with a huge variety of fruits because of its rich fruit cultivation. So, the orchids of the world is right here in the western region of the continent of Asia. In the Mediterranean region, we mostly find goats and sheep, while other animals like rabbits, jackals and lynx are found surviving here. Why are they found surviving here? Because these animals are highly dependent on grasses and vast stretches of grasses are a characteristic feature of the steppes, not the Mediterranean region. So in this type of region, we mostly find goats and sheep. Finally, the third subtype of the temperate type of climate is the temperate monsoon climate. So the temperate monsoon climate is also known as the China type of climate. Why so? Because it covers most portions of the country of China, while it also covers some portion of Korea and Japan. So the third subtype is the temperate monsoon climate, which is more popularly known as the China type of climate. Now the China type of climate is characterized by mixed evergreen and deciduous forest, right? And these usually include oak, Mongolia, camellia, camphor, bamboo, mulberry, pines. These are more commonly found here. So the China type of climate with such huge variety in its vegetation is mostly characterized by long hot summers with high annual precipitation and they also have dry winters. So this was about the China type of climate. Now what do we know about the fauna or the wildlife here? So besides providing a variety in its vegetation, the wildlife here is also diversified. We have some of the most unique animals in the China type of climate regions. And these may include these golden snub-nosed monkeys. We may also have these black woodpeckers that are beautiful as you can see. We have some giant white pandas and some black bears too. We also have vampire deers. Have you heard of the vampire deers? As you can see here that the deer here has a vampire tooth due to which it is more famously or more popularly known as the vampire deer. However, it is originally known as the water deer. Now besides these, we also have clouded leopard, Asiatic elephant 
and tigers so these are some of the most beautiful and unique wildlife of the china type of climate region so in this lesson we were able to understand that the asian continent has a variety in its temperate type of climate before that we also learnt about the tiger forest and the tiger vegetation that exists to the south of the tundra vegetation and is long winter short summers and moderate to high annual precipitation in our next lesson we'll carry on with the climatic type their vegetation and wildlife of asia don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now